Hey guys, what's going on? Jeff Benick here from Friendship, and today we are going to be talking about the famous benchmark workout, Fran. Now first, let's talk a little bit about why we want to do benchmarks. And the big reason why is we're testing our performance and one benchmark workout does not define our overall performance. And so we wanna be testing a variety of these. And if you look across our channel, we've got some of the other ones that really will give you a well-rounded look at where your health and fitness is. So that's things like Murph and DT. And today we're gonna to be talking specifically about Fran. Now Fran is a great test. It's gonna challenge both your lungs and your muscles. And we're gonna be really going at that lactate threshold as kind of the main component hit on this. So seeing if we have developed that ability for our body to flush out lactic acid while we're exercising, along with some other things uh, that are kind of going on metabolically in our body, which energy systems we use and things like that. Now to achieve that, we have to be under six minutes. That is at least gonna be our goal that we're gonna talk about for this video. And so at the end of the video, we're gonna talk about different ways that you can scale and how you should be scaling. And every time that we do this, we should scale appropriately so that we come in under that time domain. Now the workout for Ann is 21, 15, nine. Thrusters, the prescribed way is 95 and 65 for women. And then pull-ups, chin over bar. Now kipping is allowed, but a lot of people's first time through this is going to be with strict pull-ups. We're gonna talk a little bit about each one of those movements separately, and then also some strategy tips and different ways that can help you guys as we go through the workout. Our goal for this and our goal to help you guys today is no matter where you're at as an athlete, we wanna give you some takeaways on not only different little tips and tricks that can make the difference in a couple of seconds with your next try it, friend, but also some training tools that you guys can take home and take back into the gym so that the next time that you take on Fran, maybe six months from now, you've done a little bit of training, you've got a little bit of time in your pocket uh, to really help maximize the next attempt at this. All right, so let's go. I am Jenny, and I know Jeff introduced Fran to you, and now I am gonna talk about some points of performance with Maria demoing. So first we're gonna talk about the thruster, which is the first part of this workout. So number one thing we're gonna talk about is when we do it, we wanna start with a squat clean. We don't wanna waste our time power cleaning and adjusting. We wanna get right into that squat so we can do our first thruster. So Maria's gonna show us a good squat clean into a thruster and overhead. The next thing we'll talk about with it is actually grip, okay? So if you're thinking I'm doing thrusters and I'm doing pull-ups, we don't want to death grip that bar on thrusters so that our grip gives out for our pull-ups. So it's important to think about a nice open hand. There's a couple ways we can do that. Uh, my preference would be my thumb is still around. I'm just not gripping it the whole time. I'm a little bit open. So she can show a couple like that. And so she actually on that one tucked her thumb under. So I don't prefer that because my hands are smaller and I don't feel like I have as much control. But bigger hands, I think that's pretty easy to do. That probably didn't feel uncomfortable. It looked good, but it wasn't a real open grip. So the ultimate goal is not clenching and using our forearms a ton. So let's try a couple more with a little bit more of an open hand. There you go, open it up. There you go. Very good. So you can see on that one, if you looked at the difference, you can put the bar down if you want. The difference was that she actually fully opened and I think she was just more comfortable because her thumb was around. She also doesn't have big hands. So those are things you could play with is just how do you feel comfortable keeping your grip a little bit relaxed? The other part is really making sure you have a good controlled breath at the top. And I know some people think this is supposed to be quick. I'm supposed to go as fast as I can. We don't necessarily want to do that on our first set of 21 and then we die. So we wanna make sure that we have a really good sustainable pace with a good controlled breath at the top. So let's see a couple with a really good pace thruster. Good, exhale. Good, nice and controlled, little pause up here. Good, and she can set it down. So obviously, if I'm doing a little bit more of a pace thruster, and Maria's really fast with thrusters, but she did have a little moment that she paused at the top, and that's your moment to breathe. I like a good exhale, control, inhale down. You even could probably, if you really need to pace it, do a little more of a full breath at the top. But we're gonna have her show us maybe five where she's really fast with her thrusters. She's still gonna focus on breathing at the top, but she's not gonna pause intentionally. Good, pull it down. So hopefully those look pretty different. And that is for a different type of athlete. So you've probably done Fran before. You know what your capabilities are. You know you could go unbroken on the thrusters. So we aren't gonna sprint a thruster unless we know that we're prepared to sprint our thrusters. So think about, first brands, we wanna think about really kind of pausing at the top and probably also breaking them up either into two or three sets. Not long breaks, you would rather do maybe eight, seven, six, where you drop it, take one good full breath, pick it back up, than if you, you know, tried to get through 16 of them, dropped it, 
and then you had to take like 15, 20 seconds. So it's a lot of wasted time. So that is your thruster. All right, guys. So now we have all of our good tips about our thrusters. We're going to go over the pull-ups. So just remember, we're going to go over some strategy toward the end on these, but we're just going to talk about the points of performance on our pull-ups, and we're just going to discuss it as kipping pull-ups to start, okay? So for our kipping pull-up, we really want to make sure that we're nice and efficient and we have good kipping technique. If you're a little bit lost on your kipping technique or maybe how to progress getting stronger with your pull-ups, we're also going to attach our pull-up tutorials to this video so that you can follow along with those and get stronger pull-ups so you can improve your friend. So Maria is going to jump up and she's going to show us maybe like three or four kipping pull-ups with really tight kips. Very nice. So what we can see here is that she did a really great job of keeping her legs glued together, pressing down on the bar using her lats, coming around, then pushing back away. So they were consistent. Everyone looked the same. She wasn't using any extra energy by kicking her legs or throwing her chin up or doing anything crazy like that. So having a really good consistent kip is gonna be faster and you're gonna maintain your pull-ups longer if you're able to use your lats and use your core in a good, efficient way. So those were perfect. So that's exactly what we wanna see in that is that nice, tight shape. As you get fatigued and you're getting closer maybe in that set of nine, they might break down a little and not look perfect, but if they start inefficiently and with poor form, it's gonna be hard to maintain anything more than maybe singles, which we don't want. So speaking on that and the fatigue, we also don't want to go to too much fatigue in that set of 15 even. So let's say Maria was like, I know I can do 10 unbroken pull-ups which I think Maria can do more than that. But let's say she could say do 10. She might think of doing twos or threes in the set of 21 because we want to stay on the bar, keep moving fast. We don't want to start to fail in that set of 21 or 15. So we want to break it up where we know we can manage those sets. So really have to think about what is my capacity with pull-ups? How should I break this? If you know 21 is your max set of pull-ups, you probably shouldn't do that for the set of 21 because then what's gonna happen when you get onto the 15? So be smart about breaking it up so you can be as efficient as possible. Also, if you're gonna use chalk for the workout and you know you're gonna break things up, so that's say Maria's like, I'm gonna do seven sets of three in 21s. She might do three sets or four sets and then get a little chalk and have a plan for when she's gonna get it. Instead, that can be a really big time suck is to just kinda get chalk whenever you feel like maybe you want it. So better to have a plan. Or on the other end, if you are a pull-up machine and you're gonna go and try to go unbroken, I would make sure that you have tons of chalk on before you start and not even really plan on chalk breaks. But if you think you're gonna need it, have it somewhere really close where right when you transition, you can get it on your hands quickly. So you wanna think about when am I gonna use my chalk and be smart about it. So you're, you're only using your break time you would have anyway for chalking. Um, speaking of going unbroken, some of you might think, wow, an unbroken Fran. That's actually something we want to talk about because she showed those beautiful kipping pull-ups. And we recommend that you can do a full Fran, unbroken, so unbroken thrusters, unbroken pull-ups before you would think about using butterfly pull-ups or even learning them. It's important to learn that good, consistent kipping so you understand the technique, you have the rhythm, you have the strength, you have the shoulder health, and you have the endurance of pull-ups to do a workout like that. Because if you said, oh yeah, well, I just want to learn butterfly, they'll be faster. They won't be faster because you're going to fatigue faster, your shoulders aren't going to hold up, and you're still going to have to take a ton of breaks. So really think about dialing in those perfect kipping pull-ups just like Maria did because those were beautiful so that down the road you can do unbroken Fran and then you can learn beautiful butterflies. The last component is important with really everything we talk about. We talked about breathing with our thrusters. We also really want to think about how we're going to breathe with pull-ups. So this can be kind of tricky because there isn't, I would say, one perfect way to do it. But it's good to have a consistent plan. Do I think about doing That's a good way to do it, where you kind of inhale and then exhale as you're going into your kip. You also, if you're trying to really keep your heart rate as low as possible, which is hard in Fran, you can think about doing a full breath each pull up. So in on one, out on the other, because that way, um, if you're moving pretty quick through it, you're not rushing your breath and trying to breathe too quickly, because pull ups can go by pretty fast. So there are your tips for the pull-up, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about strategy. All right, guys, now we're gonna talk about progression and strategies, and a little bit of scaling is gonna be the conversation here as well. Remember, the goal, what we are trying to achieve, is to get under six minutes. So when we achieve that goal, let's say we finish in 4.46, we need to advance or move to the next progression 
the next time that we do Fran. So every time we should have sort of some goal that we are aspiring to. And once you get up to that high level where you're doing the full RX weight and the full RX pull-ups, then our goal is to continue to shave that time down, down, down till we get to those elite levels. And then we'll even talk about some RX plus or some levels just above where you can go there, okay? So first we're gonna talk about the thruster scales. Really, this is pretty easy. And Maria, you can just relax for a second. Uh, this is just gonna be a weight scale. Okay, so at first, obviously, we need to be able to do a good squat and a good push press and be able to go overhead. And we would start with something like an empty bar. If the thrusters were really killing us at six, uh, like 75 pounds for guys or 55 pounds for ladies or the RX weights are just too much. And if we're breaking these up any more than maybe five times over the workout. So like if we did seven, 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 10 and five, and then five and four, that would be the absolute most that we would wanna break up the thrusters. And if we're breaking more than that, we need to cut the weight down, okay? And we're not gonna get under six minutes if we're breaking that much on the thrusters, okay? So first thing we're gonna scale is the weight on the thrusters until we're doing all 21 unbroken. Remember, the goal is to get that lactic acid burning and burning hard, okay? Now, the pull-up progressions are gonna be very different based off of where you're at with this. We're gonna run through each of them, and you guys wanna find the one that's gonna allow you, again, to kind of move fast. And I actually think the first one we're gonna talk about is actually kind of the nastiest one. And if you guys have come to Friendship for a while and you've gone through Fran training, you've done a couple of versions of Fran that we do where we do like three Frans or five Frans or double Fran, and we do it with jumping pull-ups instead, and it really gets your heart rate going quick. So Maria's gonna pop up. And we can make jumping pull-ups easier or harder based off of the height of the box, but this is a pretty good set for her where her elbow angle is maybe a little bit below 90 degrees. And what she's gonna do is get a little bend in her legs to a jumping position to where we achieve that locked out elbow. And then she's going to jump with her legs, pull her chin over and go through these reps, making sure she's not holding her breath. People tend to hold their breath on this one quite a bit. Will you show me some like at pace in a workout? Like how fast would you go? Good. And you can see if we were to compare these to her kipping pull-ups, they're almost about the same pace, okay? So this is a really good way when we're starting to train our body and maybe we're new to lactate threshold training, uh, this can pack a punch. So we might scale the weight on the thrusters and do jumping pull-ups and try to achieve that sub six minute time. And if we do that, that's fantastic. We'll move to our next progressions. So our next progression for our pull-up is going to be a banded strict pull-up. And then we're also gonna talk about banding kipping pull-ups, okay? So Maria's gonna pop in and the key factor here, guys, with the band is she is in this hollow position, meaning there is a gap. And Maria's my wife, if you guys don't know, so it's okay if I touch her. Um, so, uh, so there's a little gap in between her uh, stomach and this, and that's because she's in this nice tight hollow position. So when she goes through her strict pull-ups, she can go ahead and pull her chin over the bar and she stays in that nice position, okay? Now, when we go through kipping banded pull-ups, she's gonna give a little, little bump into the band and then go back to that hollow position. Bump and go. So it's just a little baby kip, and this is for people who are kind of in the middle of working on that progression. Go ahead, relax, okay? So very nice, those are great options. Now, the first time that I did Fran, I was at, I think, Lifetime Fitness, uh, and I did strict, okay? And you can absolutely do this workout strict, but you're probably gonna struggle quite a bit to get under six minutes. So I recommend adding a little bit of band or taking a little bit of weight off if you guys are doing this in a setting where kipping pull-ups might not work for you. Okay. Now our last level progression is going to be the kipping and the butterfly pull-ups. So Maria's already shown you guys a couple kipping pull-ups. We'll take these down and she'll show you a couple butterfly pull-ups at pace here. Those are kipping pull-ups. Good. Now butterfly. Good. And go ahead, relax. It's so very nice. Okay. So what we want to see when, again, when we're going to the butterfly is we need to be able to do the workout unbroken and we need to have that control where if I say, go to kipping, go to butterfly, you can stay on the pull-up bar. You can stop yourself on a dime. You have that total body control and then you can do those really nice, clean, effective butterfly pull-ups. So that would be how we would progress. And what we're going to do guys is we're going to change maybe the thruster weight. Maybe you're a stronger athlete and the 95 pounds, you can do that unbroken, no problem, but the pull-ups are kicking your butt. So we might choose jumping pull-ups. So you can do an RX weight on the thrusters, but scale the pull-ups necessarily to stay inside of that six minutes, okay? So whatever your level you're gonna be at at each individual one is where we wanna be. And then if you make it under six minutes, we would move to the next pull-up progression. And then if you make it under six minutes with a strict banding pull-up, we would move to the next pull-up progression, so on and so forth, okay? Thank you, Maria. All right, now we asked Maria here to set up as if she was going to do Fran. 
And then we told her and sprung it on her that we were going to make her do Fran right now, but we're not actually going to. So this is what she said she would do for an absolute optimal setup for her to achieve best time. Okay. And what we want here is a really quick transition. Now, a couple things play in here. Okay. We talked a lot about the grip, but what she's going to need to do with the 15s on the bars, especially for women, guys, you're even going to have 25. So that bar will bounce with those weights on. So on her last thruster, she is going to set the weight back down and 21 and then turn and jump, okay? Now, very important, you notice when she set it down, she set it down and pushed it and made sure that it stayed so it's not rolling underneath her when she's doing her pull-ups, it's not moving around at all, and it's definitely not bouncing into somebody else or that next lane over, anything like that. We need to be able to then basically get off her pull-up bar, so then go ahead and show us that. Let's say you're finishing 21 here, so she finishes 21, she's gonna turn and immediately squat clean right into it, okay? Very nice, and go ahead, relax. Now, for me, if you guys are really trying to maximize your time, what I wanna see more than anything is zero transition time here and take your breaks only when you need to in the middle of the exercise. So for her, I would want to, no matter what level athlete you are, I want you to immediately get off the pull-up bar. I want you hands on bar. That's a cue I always give people, hands on bar. Get your hands on the bar and start moving it. Get it up overhead, take your first breath, and then get into it, okay? What if, it doesn't feel as bad as you think it's going to, right? What if you get those first couple thrusters up and you're like, okay, I still, I still got a little left in the tank, I'm all right. What a lot of people do is they imagine that that end of the 21 set or the end of the 15 set is an opportunity for a break time, and it's not. We need to be kind of having that killer mentality, that eye of the tiger, where when we get off, we immediately put our hands onto the bar and we have that movement mentality. Now, if she gets five thrusters up and she needs to set the bar down, she realizes like, okay, I'm getting pretty hot, then that's a good opportunity for her to take a break in that movement, okay? But we don't wanna force that upon ourselves. So that's one of my biggest strategy tip here. The other thing that she's done is she's placed her chalk in nice and tight, so if she does have to break for anything, it's a quick one, two, and then she's right back onto it. Okay, so this is our optimal setup for Fran, and this is what I would highly recommend. What, no matter what weight you guys are doing, even if you guys are doing a scaling pull-up, should be very, very quick, tight transitions as best you can. All right, so we hope you learned some things and you have some strategy moving forward to your next brand. And we would love it if you let us know how it goes and if we helped you with something. We thought it'd be fun to end today just by kind of telling a couple quick Fran stories. Uh, a lot of people are like, ah, oh, Fran, because it does, it hurts. It's one of my favorite benchmarks, actually. Um, I like thrusters, I really like pull-ups. Um, so I know my first Fran, I remember, I think I still did unbroken thrusters, which was good, and I did kipping pull-ups still. And I was like really low three minutes, which is really good for a first Fran. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of when we were like, oh, you really need to start butterflying. Mm -hmm. So I did that, and eventually I did an unbroken butterfly, but I still always paced my thrusters. Um, as a competitive athlete, I, was, I like to be very in control, I don't like to go as hard as I can. So I will tell you then, I was doing a qualifier for Wadapalooza, and I was on a team, and everyone had to do a different girl workout, and so I was assigned to Fran, because my teammates thought I would be the best at it, and I was like, all right, I'm just gonna go. Like, I'm actually gonna go as fast as I can, and if I die, I'll just redo it later with like more paced thrusters. And I did it, I did it in 213, which is my best friend. But um, that was like a moment that I, I had gone through all the progressions pretty much. I like a pace thruster and I finally decided I wasn't gonna do that and I was successful. So I feel like I kind of went through these progressions as an athlete and I yep. was super happy and I'll probably never do faster than a 213 friend, so. <laughs> yeah, and I think that gets to the point too of like just trusting yourself and yep. I, that mentality of you know getting into that place where I'm actively going to take this out and something that's uncomfortable, I'm actively gonna try to do something. I'm gonna try to pick the bar up right when I get off the pull-up bar and just see what happens. Yep. And if you crash and burn, you crash and burn. And I don't think, I don't truly think you've really given this benchmark a go until you've like totally crashed and burned it where you're on your nine set and like you just got nothing left. Uh, so yeah, you know, I did it. I have a couple cool stories. Um, you know, I remember the first time I did it was uh, right when I first got out of the military and I was at Lifetime Fitness. I was training by myself. I had headphones in and I had like these like small plastic weights and I was doing strict pull-ups and I want to say it. I mean, it took me at least 12 or 13 minutes. It took me an eternity <laughs> and I was still dead and I remember like thinking in my head though, like 
that's a pretty good time. Like, that's gonna, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's gonna be pretty good. And I went and looked up other people's times. And I'm like, how the hell are people doing this? And then, so then I realized like there was, okay, people are trying to do other ways of pull-ups. And um, you know, then I started to learn, okay, kipping pull-ups, like why do people do kipping pull-ups? And again, because the goal is lactate threshold. We're trying to you know, push that heart rate and elevate that heart rate higher. And so, uh, so we try to kind of learn that. So then that started my gymnastics progression. Fran for me has always been a tough workout. It's not a very good tall guy workout. And so I have really long limbs and arms. Uh, and so that makes Fran a little bit awkward for me. Um, but it was one of those things where I had to be really good at the gymnastics. And then for me, it was just a mental game. So uh, we're gonna overplay some stuff of uh, me and my wife Maria going at it. And I wanted to do it with her because I, she's so fast. So she's really tiny and small and has tiny levers. And so I'm pretty sure she finishes her first set of 21 thrusters when I'm at like 17. And we go, both go unbroken for the whole workout. I think she beats me by like maybe 15 seconds. Um, so I had a summer Fran time and a winter Fran time. I'm also a big sweater. Uh, so for me, my summer, Fran time was always quite slower. a bit slower because I needed chalk and uh, I was sweating so much during those workouts. Uh, so my, my winter Fran time was always my best Fran time. I think my best off the top of my head is like 220, 222, something like that. Um, and that was, a, that was a winter Fran. So I have a bunch of them. I think I've done it. I think I looked before this. I've done it 16 times. Um, so everything in between there. And I, I, yeah, I'm always between 220 and 240 is always kind of my my. And Jeff, if you don't know, I mean, he's going to overplay some stuff. So Thrusters, I would say that's where you're, yeah. it's the depth on the thruster and how Slow. long your arms are, yep. but his pull-ups are beautiful for a bigger gymnast. Sometimes. So, no, they are. <laughs> so he doesn't lose a lot of time on those. Yeah. So that's a, that's actually a really good key in why efficiency is important, yeah. right? Because you would be way slower if you weren't an efficient efficient. Oh yeah, for sure. Player. I had to be, I, as a big person, you have to make sure that you're working on your gymnastics. And then my absolute favorite Fran thing of all time, I'm going to give a shout out to Star Fox. So when I coach Fran, I always try to like, sort of make the athletes feel like, okay, this is an event. Like this is gonna be something we're all gonna do. We're gonna do it together, it's shared suffering. And when I'm talking about it, if you look in the background, you'll see Chris and he's just pacing. And he's just like, he's just like, he, he won't talk to anybody. He's like, got like, he'll be like, Ugh. he's like thrown up in his mouth and he's like, he's like just super nervous. And he doesn't get nervous about like anything else in the entire world. He's the most cool, cool, calm, collected guy, firefighter. But uh, Fran just makes him nervous as hell. He knows how it's um, gonna feel. And that's that's what I think. It's just kind of a cool workout in that way. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure you guys have probably felt that those little bit of nerves before. So if you guys have never done it before, it's a cool thing to kind of be a part of. And I hope you guys do enjoy the workout. That's awesome.